Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff in which I want you to do a guitar experiment with me, okay? Tune the sixth string to F, okay? Trust me on this. Tune it from E to F, okay? And I'm going to show you how powerful the relation between A minor and F is, okay? I'm pretty sure that you think you know A minor and F, but unless you're insane like me, uh, I'm pretty sure that you uh, didn't really exhaust all the options you have between the two, between A minor and F. Now, I, I want you to, um, I want you to play A minor, okay, and then F, and just get used to the sound. Okay, you can open the second string. You can add three on the E string. Okay, you can play okay, A minor seven. Okay, that nothing nothing wrong with that. Okay, three on the E string with A minor or with F. Okay, that's F nine. Okay, F add nine. Okay, just listen and remember that you have the sixth string to play. Okay, I don't want to play anything that is overly demanding for this hand. Okay, that's why I tuned the sixth string to F. Okay, trust me on this, I know what I'm doing. Okay, just have fun with the chord. I'm opening the second string as well. Just get into it, okay? Like I am right now. Just get into the music, okay? Into A minor and F. Now, there's a point here, okay? But I'm not gonna tell you the point. Okay, I want to, us to keep experimenting. And we're gonna go up the neck as well. We're gonna go up the, the guitar neck and play it in many different frets. Okay, and dirty it up. Okay, open strings and then hammer on the chord. Okay, you can hammer on the whole chord. Okay, now as you do it, I want you to play A minor with the F bass. And I want you to play F with the A bass. Okay, that will give you an F major 7 sound. But it sounds really, really weird. Doesn't sound like F major 7. Okay, but try it anyway. You play A minor, but with F as your bass, the sixth string. And then you turn it into an F chord, but you play the A bass, okay? Try it for a while. Slide the F two frets up into G, but don't get stuck there. Just use it as a lick. Right. You can go back to the normal bass notes. Right. What I wanted to show you was that the, the, the relationship between these chords, A minor and F, is so strong that if you play, um, actually theoretically, it's very simple. Because if you play F with the A bass, you're still playing F because F has an A note in it. So you're just playing the third of the F chord in the bass. Okay, so it's still F. If you're playing A minor with the F bass, then you get an F major 7 because you're playing the E note. Okay, you're playing the E note. Okay, but because it's low, you get this dark sound. I'm still. It's, it's still not my point. All right, ready to take this up a notch? Go to five. Okay, play five, five, five for A minor. You can also play five, zero, five. 
Right? You can play. Okay, and you can play uh, F with five six five. Okay, so it's five 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 for A minor, five six five for F. And try that for a while, and you can open the second string. Remember. Just sliding, pulling off to open strings. Okay, I'm not playing any, any any specific lick. I'm just toying around, going crazy, listening, and keeping a straight rhythm. That's all I'm doing. sliding five to four. Why? Because my fingers wanted to do it. Okay. You can take this up to here. D minor shape on eight. So it's eight, ten, nine on the third string. Okay? Eight on the first, ten on the second. 9 on the 3rd. If you want F, it's 10 on the 3rd. Just... Okay? Now, this is... It's using too many fingers, so you can't really do anything here. Except for arpeggios. I'm playing strings 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay? With the F bass, for example. So, experiment with it a little bit. You can add 10 on the E string, you can add 7. You can play 12 on the E string. Okay, um, with you can you can play uh, twelve ten ten for F and twelve ten nine for A. Okay, I'm just barring ten. Okay, and and then you can make your way down. You can add a bar on five and add seven and eight on the E string. Okay, just play around with it. Okay, again, nothing too fancy. No. Okay, no pentatonics, please. Now it's time for my point. My point is that there is no way to end this. You can end it on A minor, but it's not really an ending. There's no way to end it. It's endless. The, 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 you can't get any satisfaction, any final say between these two chords. And that's the frustrating thing about music. And that's the beautiful thing about music. You can just carry on with this forever. Yeah, you, you, We'll never find a way to properly finish this. Never. N not unless you add more chords. If you add C and you add G, um, then you can get some sort of musical satisfaction out of this. Or E major. Okay, but I want you to stay on A minor and F. And feel. Okay, because if, if you finish... That, 
the, what happened there. Yeah, this is not really an ending. It's a very open ending. That isn't really satisfying, right? I wanted you to experience that. I wanted you to experience the endlessness of music. I know, it was pretty... It was pretty tricky of me to do it this way, but there's no other way. Music is endless. You never finish playing. You never, you never reach an ending point. There is no ending point to music. There is no goal. There is no stopping point. There, there are no stops along the way. Music is endless. It's big. It's bigger than any of us. And you can never, ever, ever finish it. Okay? Even if you think you do. Uh, there is no end to anything. Okay? Anything is it's just arbitrary. So uh, that's the power of music. So thank you very, very much for watching and trusting me with this experiment. I hope that it satisfied you in some way, if not musically. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Enjoy.